Look at okay. how quick it goes up in kilobytes, the quick time thing. Yeah. 500. Yeah. 600. Here on two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, one, two. Uh, it goes quicker the more, yeah. Well, the Does more it? you do stuff. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight. Oh, yeah. Now we're in the, now we're in the MBs now, though. La, 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 One meg. I'm 1.4. Whoa. 1.5. 1.2. 1.6. God, this is insane. Just do this for the pod. <laughs> just data. Just creating data. <laughs> and just be stored two. somewhere in a server. Right, should we start? Yeah. I, I'm going to have to hide that. Cause <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's fascinated <laughs> by the, the, me, the megabytes. megabytes. I'll, to, I'll just look at the megabytes. We'll have a look Mega, at the end. Megatron. Mega. Megan Markle. Megan Markle. <laughs> Welcome to Drum and Drummer, a podcast focused on drums, drumming and drummers. I'm George Pickering and that's Ben Winty and we are both professional drummers in this business we call music. So stick around and join us as we pass the time whilst trying to stay in time. It crashes with a full sound that fades out with a consistently smooth decay and a blend of bright and dark tonality. Right. And I was like, yeah, yeah. that's exactly what I heard. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Fanta, the Nazis, running shoes, symbols. We're going to take you on a journey on this week's Drum and Drummer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is episode 84. 84. Georgie Brilliant. Boy joining me as always. How are you? I'm good. Um, so I don't know what any of this is that you've got coming up. Yeah. Did you say Fanta or Fanta? Yeah. Fanta. yeah, yeah, yeah. So Fanta... You say Fanta. the Nazis or the Nazi? The Nazis. Okay, cool. Running shoes. Running shoes. And symbols. symbols. So they're yeah. all involved somehow. Sort of. Sort of. Yeah. Because for a few weeks, I've been told, not just by you, but by other people around you in your circle, that you have some great symbol chat yes. that you haven't even told me about. No. You've been saving it for this episode. For this episode. But I've had to sit through stuff. guests yeah. with this, this gem in my head. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell us about your teaching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Tell us about your successful career. <laughs> right. Fanta. You ready? Well, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not going to start now. No, we're going to have a little catch up. Okay, okay. Um, the weekend Save just it. gone, George, was uh, Glastonbury. Mm. Or Glastonbury. Um, Glastonbury, Glastonbury. Uh, did you watch any of it? Because I'm assuming you weren't there. I wasn't there, no. I watched Bits. I watched Foo Bits. Fighters Live Yeah. Uh, when it was on the telly, which was good. Weird, wasn't it? Because it was like 5 p.m. or something, and yeah. they're the Foo Fighters, and they're playing in the sun. Do you know what I mean? You expect them to be at night and dark and headline. But um, what what a lineup that was, even just those three bands. Foo I mean, Fighters, that was your... Royal Bloods, Art of Monkeys. I could make... Uh, yeah, that's your dream, isn't it? Really, that is my that's, dream. That's literally, yeah, your ideal lineup. And let's be honest, Jack Geary lived the absolute dream that day. A past yep. guest of the pod, past guest. Yeah, I, th I think one of a few who were at were playing at Glastonbury this year. Yeah, I think Johnny Brewster was there with Jake Shears. Yeah, um, but yeah, Jack was there. Pyramid stage, Maisie with Maisie Peters. Peters. Just the, and then bef before the three of my favorite yeah. bands ever, you know. Yeah, and then there's a little picture of him with Dave Grohl. Yeah, you know. I mean, that's that's. And you weren't jealous day. at all, were you? No, no, no. I was, I was fine with that actually. No, I yeah, yeah. Didn't want to meet jealous. him. Didn't want to. Yeah. No. Next. Um, um, so I watched yeah, a bit of Maisie. Watch, yeah, you watch more than me. I haven't watched much. Yeah, what, I've never really um, watched that much of Glastonbury in the past. Mm. But obviously, just had a bit of time and thought, yeah, we'll watch a little bit in it. Mm. And um, oh, I'll I, I just say, I'm a big fan. Like, since Glastonbury 07, I was always, you know, right, who's on when? And then I'd record it on the DVD thing and watch it back for the next year before the next one. That was always, you know, exciting bit. I mean, it, you know, it'd probably be more exciting to actually go to the festival. Well, I mean, when you played it, mate. Yeah. Like me. <laughs> You know. <laughs> oh yeah, you did it. Yeah, ten years ago. Yeah. Two thousand and thirteen. With Gypsy Hill. 
Yeah. Um, I actually played trombone in that band. And we were we, we were on the main poster, the last band on the main poster. And <laughs> well, I've got that like poster at the bottom, up at the bottom of the poster. The bottom right, <laughs> the very last band. We were on one of the, what you consider a main stage. It was like the eighth stage. I think it was called like the Spirit of 78 or something. Okay. Last band. We were on there. Nice. We'll put a you picture of that out. Got in. Yeah. It's quite So I've, I have been, not as a punter, but. Mm. I was there for. Did you stay though? I had is to this... stay because actually we did like <laughs> yeah, a lot. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I like a lot. Of... Yeah. Go on. This was this when you were becoming bitter. I don't know you ten years ago, or were you like, yeah, I'll stay. I'll I'll arrive Wednesday and then stay till Monday. Oh God, no, 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 no. no. Keep it down to a minimum. Yeah. <laughs> keep it down. No, because we like a lot of bands, smaller bands. You do more than one show. Mm. So we did Friday evening down on like i think it's called like the hell stage yeah and then we did saturday afternoon on the spirit of 70 something stage nice and then we had to hang around a bit and then we had to leave at like 11 p.m because we were flying to germany to go and do another festival very cool was that saturday that you left saturday night we left yeah so did on friday did you okay what i'm asking is did you watch arctic monkeys because they played that yeah 2013. Mm. I'm guessing not. So. No. <laughs> no. No. I'm pretty sure Rolling Stones. We saw the Rolling Stones. Yeah, they were on Saturday. Mumford and Sons Sunday. Yeah, so Friday, no, didn't. No, we saw a bit of the Rolling Stones on the Saturday before we then, we mm. then left. Mm. And trying to find your car at Whilst midnight. Whilst listening to Gimme Shelter. At midnight is not, fu- is not fun. <laughs> no. Because <laughs> that fucking place is huge. Yeah. Um. But yeah, thankfully we um we were the camping we had like VI like artist camping. Mm. So we were quite central mm. and it was quite quiet really. Even though it was central, but we weren't like <laughs> way away. Well, d- keep we noise were down. basically we were fenced off from the riffraff. <laughs> that's all I'm that's us. <laughs> there you go. Um, I think that answers my question as to whether you got involved. Nah, not really. Nah. Um, I was thankfully a few of my friends were actually there that year, so I went and hung out with them for a bit on nice. Friday night. Yeah, yeah, which was good. Um, it does seem like everyone went this year. This was the year that just everyone I know seemed to be at Glastonbury. Yeah, I guess well, I said a lot of things online about it being too crowded. Yeah, but they always packed. are, aren't they? Yeah, Festivals. Do you remember when Victoria started getting bigger? Victorious being a Portsmouth music festival, and it started off small. And in one year, they were like, let's get some Fuck it, bands. let's have 80,000. Yeah, and yeah. have the same amount of toilets we had last year and bars, and it was just fucking chaos, you know. Yeah. No but anyway, um, back to this year's Glastonbury. Mm. Yeah, watched a few things. Um, it was good, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was fine, but <laughs> we had weddings to do. That's why we, we weren't there. That's the only oh. reason we weren't there, isn't it? Yeah. Can you hear that? No. My, it's my doorbell going. Who the fuck's ringing my... Do you want to go and answer it? No, because it might be the TV license, man. Have but you got the TV license? A, no, I don't. <laughs> it could well, also be a uh, package. Let me go quickly and, check. Go check. Look for your peephole. Just while George is uh, checking his door. Uh, what else did I watch? Bit of Elton John. Uh, couldn't understand a fucking word he was saying. Raw Blood, watched Raw Blood. That was very good. Uh, Capaldi lost his voice, didn't he? Uh, yeah, that Kate Blanchett dance, that was weird. Um, yeah, other than that, couldn't be bothered. Yeah. yeah. Postman. All right. Yeah. For you? No, he was trying to work out which flat within the flats it was. And I was like, I think Sam is downstairs. I'm like, don't know though. Or I can hear him talking. Anyway, let's not get sidetracked by the postman. Do um, you, um, does the TV license man come around a lot? No, he's never been around. But you know those uh, letters you get? Yeah. What were we talking about? Uh, Glass the Bee. Yes. Yeah. I've got nothing else to say. <laughs> On it. Oh, it. one thing. Um, yeah. uh, did you see what happened to Lana Del Rey? Was this pre-Glastonbury? No, this was her set. 
Oh, on she was. Saturday. A, can I just say she was annoyed before she even started? Did you see this? Because when they do the lineup, first of all, they'll do it just in alphabetical order. So even if you're like one of the headliners, you'll be like, if your name's like you know ZZ Top, you'll be down at the bottom. It's good. You've plucked yeah. out possibly the last <laughs> band name alphabetically ever. I I went Elton John because not only is there a Z, there's (laughs) there's another one. So even if you're called Zanzibar, (laughs) you're still gonna be. It's like Aaron in a baby book, you know. That is the first name, Um, and the the last name is ZZ Top. (laughs) Is there a child born called ZZ Top? (laughs) There must be, right? Somewhere in Texas. Um, So anyway. Her name was, even though she headlined the other stage or something, I can't remember, her name was like in the middle and she was got really pissy and was like, I'm not going to do it if my name isn't higher on the poster, you know. Um, so she was already pissed off before she even got there. So, yeah, what happened? I have no idea. I think she was 45 minutes late coming on. <sighs> and then Glastonbury has a curfew, mm. apparently. So at midnight, they turned her microphone off. Good, good. She had six songs left to play. Turn yeah. the mic off. Serves and it right. was nice to go, yeah. yeah. Sound restrictions apply to all. <laughs> Just, <laughs> yeah. The sound limiter. You know. Yeah. Whereas we're the other way. We're like, well, let's go on earlier. <laughs> we can finish earlier. <laughs> but anyway. Did you know, quick fact about Lana Del Rey, she actually tried to, you know, make it as a singer twice before being Lana Del Rey under two different names and it didn't work. So Lana Del Rey was like her third attempt at being... A pop star, and it worked. Right. But before she was called like, I don't know, something else weird, and it was like, doesn't, it's not working. Do another one. It's not so working. So when we change the name of this podcast, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you'll know why. Yeah, I yeah. thought of a good uh, podcast name the other day, but I don't know where we do it. Do you remember some mothers do have them? Yeah, just do some drummers do have them, <laughs> and then we could get Frank Spencer on. You know. Do you play the drums? Alive. No, but oh. just for that. Our mums don't play the drums, but we got them on, you know. True. Um, I feel like I'm going to struggle to stay on one topic today. Quite, you know, rambly. But stick to, what were we talking about? That's fine. Glastonbury. Right, well, uh, yeah, <laughs> like, Glastonbury, oh, yeah. fine. Done, we'll move on. We'll move on from <laughs> Glastonbury. Yeah, go Whatever. on. You know. Um, yeah, I mean, I had a gig on the weekend. Oh, yeah. Uh, with Victoriana. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to dwell on it too much. <laughs> no. <laughs> but first off, I know you'll have experienced this, George, at some mm. point, playing in the wedding game. But when you arrive, you got to be like, go and find usually the organiser. So we yep. got there at three o'clock to do an acoustic set in the afternoon at five. Yeah. And this, ju- this just in general, we knew this, this wedding was going to be like quite a late wedding like their ceremony wasn't until like four Mm. and then we were going to do five till six for drinks and then we knew we weren't going to be sort of playing until like half nine yeah for the evening sets um but we arrived and it was in someone's fucking big house that they Mm. owned in the big marquee in the garden so we arrived and went and saw saw someone setting up tables and went and spoke to them and said oh we're the band she's like oh you're going to be here in the evening and then over there the acoustic set and I said oh great is there electricity over there and she said oh we didn't think you needed electricity <laughs> I was like oh well we do yeah um because you know PA yeah. system it's anyway, acoustic but to a point yeah to a point you know keyboards yeah and <laughs> vocals yeah. And <laughs> anyway she's oh you know you need to go and speak to Judy who's in charge so I went and found Judy and I I still don't know if I processed this at all, <laughs> but she was this old woman, and I said, "Oh, how are you, Judy?" And she said, "Yeah." And I said, "Oh, I'm, I'm Ben. I'm, I'm part of the band." And, and this was her response: "Oh, well done." <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 Start with that. And I said, "Oh, you know, just spoke to Elsa, and we're, we're playing the acoustic set over there this afternoon, and." We need electric. We need power. Yeah. Well, we were told you didn't need power. <laughs> okay. Well, we do. Yeah. And she was like, "Well, my hands are tied. There's nothing I can do about it." <laughs> no way. So, if you want to go and speak to the bride, but she's getting ready. What the fuck? 
And then I was like, okay. And she said, well, you can go and have a look. There's, there's, there was like a house, like a little mini house behind where we were playing. Yeah. I was like, do you think we could just run some power from there? Mm. She's like, well, you can try. And then she, as she, as she walked away with her hands up, she went, I can't just magic power out of thin air. <laughs> <laughs> Like, oh, I love fuck it. Fuck you. Yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> All right, we're going to sort out ourselves. Yeah. And we did. Mm. And anyway, she was just an absolute, I'm going to say it, absolute cunt. Mm. Um, and then <laughs> classic wedding just ran on and on. Yeah. We didn't sound check till 20 past 10. So that's mental. What time are you meant to be on? Half nine. Amazing. And, but and no one was, was in charge. No one was, was taking curfew? midnight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we did just an hour and 15 minute set. Yeah. And then finished. And then um, a couple of us had to stay in DJ till 2 a.m. Oh, okay. Yeah. Every, everyone, or 95% of the people at that wedding, because I say we got there, I was like, I reckon these are old. I reckon this couple's old. Mm. They had a George Harrison song as their first dance, which was fucking rubbish. I was like, I reckon they're old. Yeah. Boom. They were old. They were an old, yeah. elderly couple in there. Must have been in their 60s. Incredibly yeah. wealthy. Mm. 95% of the people at that wedding were over 60. Wow. And they'd paid for DJ till 2 a.m. <laughs> and it's like, they ain't going to last. No. This is insane. No. Fair play to them. They were dancing till 2 a.m. Well, yeah. They were, were mean, here in the 70s and around when punk was about, you know. And, uh, I mean, but these were, they, they, they don't know. They don't know punk. No, they these don't were know punk. Very wealthy. Yeah. Posh people. Um, anyway, yeah. I just couldn't believe. It's just, I bet she didn't speak to the caterers like that. No. Do you know what I mean? Mm. What's what's the difference? Yeah. We're, we're a valid supplier. Why do you have to be so rude? Yeah. <laughs> cool. Maybe, she, maybe right. she wanted to play drums and yeah. she was never allowed. <laughs> something like that. <laughs> we but then we heard, it, we heard her how she was talking to the like uh, waiters and waitresses mm. and it was so degrading. Really? Yeah. I pay you more than London wages. Wow. So I don't want any talk back. Wow. Don't ever stand with your back to someone. Wow. I mean, it was like insane. Anyway. Yeah. Still, we I had a lot of money. So cheers. Yeah, that's fine. We had one. Fuck you, Judy. Fuck you. And uh, yeah, it ran quite late for us, but we didn't care. Do you know what I mean? It was like we had to arrive at quarter six for food and then we couldn't sound check until half six, which was fine. So we got there. And then, yeah, they were like, right, everything's running a bit late. We're going to try and get people out. And we could see, I'd literally played the place last week. So I knew, is this is sad, I knew which tables they'd have to take out so that we could play. And I could see that those two tables, there weren't any people on them. So I was like, oh, they just need to clear them. And then loads of people just came in and sat down on them and you could see the staff like oh for fuck's sake there's a guy like sprawled out on two chairs like oh this is this is the life but we weren't phased you know i think we started sound checking at 20 to 8 and we were meant to be on at 10 past 8 and we were like just so you know that's not going to happen they're like could you do quarter past <laughs> no might be able to do half past but it's going to be quarter to nine and you just have to deal with it. And that's but the thing. That's what astounds me is like so much of that gets put on us. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, on Saturday it was like we didn't we didn't start sound checking too late because they were still having their dessert yeah, at like yeah, 10 yeah. o'clock. Yeah. And we don't want to like just start going up there and sound checking because no. they might be like, well, can you just wait till. Yeah. But no one had a grip on this wedding. No. No one. We hadn't even spoken to the bride and groom at this point. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, we were well fed, th fair play, we, we got looked after. But we're like, the onus isn't on us no. to make this happen. Like, who's, yeah, you know? We I do know. Yeah. Anyway. But that's yeah. it, yeah. I'm and sometimes I like to go, fuck it. It's not my, it's not my problem. No. No. It's not my well, fault. That's, that's the best approach, rather than getting stressed and then, because as soon as you go, oh, well, we'll try and do it in 40 minutes, and then you don't, and then they're like, why couldn't you... Whereas Lennon's the best I've ever seen at that. I've said it before. But he just said, we have 90 minutes in the contract. We're going to have 90 minutes, <laughs> you know, even yeah. if it runs yeah. two hours late. Um, anyway, go on then. Fanta, Nazis, running shoes, symbols. What well, I'm going to start off with, a few weeks ago, I bought some new symbols. Yeah, you did. So we're going to start with that because I haven't talked about that yet. No. Um, so my A Custom 18-inch mm -hmm. was 
had little cracks appearing around the edge. Yep. My ride symbol, I've spoken to you about this before. It's nothing wrong with it. Just a taste thing. Well, you've it's had it 20 st- years? Had it uh, 22 years. Yeah, that's mental. I wanted something a bit different. But anyway, priority was crash. Mm. So I popped down old G. Russ. Yep. <laughs> Graham Russell drums. Shout out Graham Russell. Shout out Graham Russell. Come on the pod. And <laughs> I took my cymbal bag with me, took my sticks, uh, walked in, um, had a chat with some of the boys there I know. And I was like, I'm looking for a new crash. Come on, <laughs> Did he say it like that? Oh, crash. <laughs> I'm looking for a new... Let's cut the shit. I'm looking for a new crash. <laughs> um, so, uh, Rob, uh, who works there, helped me out. And he was like, anything in mind? And I was like, no. <laughs> like my Sabian, my yeah. other Sabian. Yeah. Uh, I want to hear what sounds best. Mm. You know, so we went upstairs to the... They got that kit set up, haven't they? Yeah. And uh, just sort of started trying out. Uh, lots of different crashes. Mm-hmm. Got to find one which blends well with the other cymbals, but one which I like. And I stumb and uh, ended up with this bad boy. <laughs> I've got it here with me. Yep. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? So this is a. Have I I've, seen I've got, it already? I don't know. Did I, I sent I you a photo of it. Didn't I? Did you play them on that gig we played where I was on bass? Uh, can't remember. <laughs> when did we do that? <laughs> a few weeks ago, but you had that twenty-one inch ride. And yeah, yeah. Is this it? What? <laughs> I can't remember the gig at all. We, um, Elliot was on it. Oh, yeah. If I had the new ride, I had this new crash. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I've seen it, but I haven't heard about it. So yeah. 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 So it's uh, gone Sabian again, boy. Yeah. Gone Sabian again. And this is this is a it's a nineteen inch mm. Sabian HHX. Mm. Legacy, nice crash, and it's fucking lush. <laughs> it is lush. <laughs> I love it. And I was feeling flush, George. I'll be honest. Mm. Got carried away, and I said, "Let's look at rides as well." <laughs> Go on then. <laughs> Go on, son. Go and get me the rides. <laughs> Go and get the rides. Let's see. Yeah, spending big, isn't it? Yeah. Again, tried lots of different rides out. Mm-hmm. Uh, K's, Zeds. Yeah. Sabians, 20 inch, 22 inch. Well, for this boy, this bad boy. <laughs> Got it here with me. I love it. Yeah, nice. 21 inch. Yeah. A sweet ride. Mm. So that's A, not a sweet ride. Yeah. That's A, Zildjian A, 21 inch sweet ride. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and I, I fucking love him. Yeah. And I'm like, this is the best symbol combination now. Yeah, I've ever had as a drummer. Mm. So just to recap, mm. I've got my 13-inch A Master Sounds mm-hmm. hi hats, mm-hmm. my new Sabian 19-inch Legacy Crash, mm-hmm. a 21-inch A Sweet Ride, mm. and my 18-inch Sabian HHX Evolution Crash. Which side do you have each crash? So. The new 19 one is on my left. Is it? By, by the hi-hats. Mm. And the 18 is on my right. Because that's the one I replaced this broken K with. Yeah. Was the, And the reason I got that Sabian, 8, the 18-inch one, is because that sounds awesome rocking out on. Right. However, when we were trying out crashes the other week, we swapped them around as well. Because it was maybe my 18-inch becomes my crash by the hi-hat. Mm. And I get a new one for rocking out on. Mm. And actually, in my opinion, the the, t- the two crashes I now have, depending on the session, you could swap them around. Yeah. And it works either way. Nice. So, yeah. Right. Very happy with them. Go on, then. What have you learned? Well, so... Let's get my telephone out. <laughs> I, um... Because I, I bought my... I bought those symbols based on sound. Yeah. Yeah. And what worked, what sound I liked, sound I wanted, and how it all blended with um, my other symbols. Mm. Right. First off, though, I'm going to take you to Reddit. Yep. Right. And someone had posted about looking to buy a new pair of hi hats. Mm -hmm. And they listed their other symbols. And. Uh, user Andrew <laughs> posted, get 13-inch Avidus Master Sounds. 
I have a 21 inch sweet ride and those hats are its spiritual sibling. Ah. And I was like, yes, that's what I've got. <laughs> I've got those two. Yeah. And I, I thought it sounded fucking lush. Yeah. So I'm like, there we go. That's money spent, justified, mother. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I bought these symbols on sound. So I was like, I'm going to find out more about the symbol I bought. Right. Particularly the crash. Right. So I went on uh, the Googles mm. and I looked up the HHX legacy symbols by Sabian. Mm-hmm. Uh, the HHX Legacy Pack is part of Dave Weckl's signature symbol line. Mm. It has its little signature on the back. These are slightly larger symbols. It comes in a pack. 15-inch hi-hat, 19-inch crash, 22-inch ride. I see you yawning. No, I wasn't yawning. It's not I a good just, start because uh, there's a lot more to come. No, 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 anyway. yeah. It's not relevant. <laughs> <laughs> so then, <laughs> um, designed to be heard but smoothly blend in, in the groove at the forefront of your performance. Yeah. I've always said that. Yeah. I've always said that. The legacy symbols are highly responsive, featuring a clean yet soft and buttery stick sound. Uh, dynamically sensitive and versatile for a wide range of musical styles. Um, and I was like, yeah, yeah. And then the crash itself. The 19-inch legacy crash sounds smooth at all levels with plenty of projection the large profile bell and diameter make it easy to ride on with sweet stick definition and hypnotizing washy tones. It crashes with a full sound that fades out with a consistently smooth decay and a blend of bright and dark tonality. Right. And I was like, yeah, yeah. that's exactly what I heard. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But I'm not bullshitting. No. It's like, yeah, it projects. It's not too bright. It's not too dark. Mm. It's got a good tone. Anyway, so I was like, that's cool. Like, I just wanted to find out. Then I was like, what does HHX mean? Mm. I've, I've my other Sabian as HHX. Mm. And I was thinking, it's probably something I should know mm. as a drummer of substantial uh, years. Because there's also, do you know what the other Sabian type of symbol is? Um, if it's not HH. No. It's AA. Oh, yeah. So you get the Sabian AA yeah. and AAX. So I was like, I'm going to look up. What, is that? what does this mean? Mm. What do these letters mean, mm. George? Mm. So AA Hungry is hippo. automatic. Huh? Hungry hippo? No, AA. Oh, AA. I was doing AHH. Angry aardvark. Yeah. Yeah. So ang- angry aardvark and hungry hippo. Yeah. <laughs> That's what Sabian went for. Yeah. yeah. Next. Now on to the Nazi. <laughs> no, go on. <laughs> Nazis, plural. Nazis. Um, automatic anvil. Automatic anvil. Is what the AA stands for. Right. And, and the HH is hand hammered. Okay. And you go, yeah, that makes sense. So I haven't done too much research into that, but I think automatic anvil is, is like a machine press. Yeah. And hand hammered is hammered by hand. Yeah. And the X is the modern version of those two processes. Right. If you see what I mean. Yeah. Like, it's like you got Disney and Disney Plus. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so the X is like, yeah, the sort of more modern versions of those. So I was like, that's pretty cool. Okay, yeah. I'm learning. I'm learning. I'm learning for me. I'm learning for you. Mm. Learning, I'm learning for, for the, the listeners. I'm learning for the people. Yeah. Yeah. And then I went, I'm going to find out a little bit more about Sabian. Mm. Because I noticed upon examining my symbol and my other one... <laughs> Got it here again. Mm. I got it here again. It um, the little embossed sort of stamp. Can't see there. Yeah. It's got Sabian. It's got this little logo thing. Underneath it, it says Canada. Right. I was like, oh yeah, my other one has that as well. <laughs> but I'm gonna rewind, George. <laughs> Before <laughs> that sent me then on a w- on a little down a little rabbit hole mm. of research about Sabian, which to me. I had the same feeling as when I found out about Adidas and Puma. I don't know what Adidas and Puma thing is. Right. So you just, you know, you're aware of brands, Mm. right? You know Adidas, you know Puma, Nike, Mm. Reebok, all that sort of stuff. But I remember, it's quite a while ago now, but I found out about Adidas and Puma. Mm. And you know, you've got the 
there's the adage, oh, Adidas stands for all day I dream about sport. I didn't know that, but that's good, yeah. Right. But it's not true. Right. That's not what it means. Adidas, and you know, Nike, where, where do companies get their name from? Yeah. It's usually from a person or something. Like Nike was a, the goddess of something or other. Mm. Adidas is someone's name. Right. Or more importantly, his name was Adolf Dassler. <laughs> okay. Where is this going? <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> Um, I've, I have done some research. I'm going to try and do it from memory. I'm probably going to get things wrong. Yeah. But he was a German fella. Yeah. Called Adolf. Adolf Dassler. <laughs> right. And they made shoes. Right. Would you, who, who's they? His, him and his company. Okay, got you. Right. Him and his family, you know, a lot of family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway. Uh, then he made a new way of making spikes for running shoes mm-hmm. rather than like metal he did something else plastic or something and then he gave them to Jesse Owens who ran at the 1930 something Olympics and won four gold medals mm. right and then Adidas that was why it's called Adidas right. Adi Dassler yeah right he had a brother called Rudolf <laughs> Dassler <laughs> they fell out because I think one was a bit Pro Nazi, right? And the other one was a bit not sure about it all. Mm. So he moves across the road, sets up a new factory, and calls it Puma. Right? How did and Puma are made by the same family? Wow! They hate each other, and they still do. Yeah, I mean they're dead, but yeah, that rivalry was there forever. And I think even to this day, there's a auto barn, and on either side is the Puma factory, and the other one is the Adidas factory. Wow. You're like, in that, you just think, mate, they're, like they're two rival brats. Yeah. Two brothers, mm. same family, fell out. They, uh, yeah. To me, that's quite... That is mad. When I first found that out. Yeah. And then I was telling a friend at dinner a few weeks ago about my Sabian story. And they were like, they're not drummers, but they were like, that's pretty cool. And I said, it's like Fanta for the Nazis. And my mate Martin went, what? It's like when Coke made Fanta for the Nazis. He's like, what? Did you know this? No. So Coca-Cola, American company, they had a German division. War breaks out, innit? Ooh, you know, got a bit (laughs) war-y. Coca-Cola, German, like, well, we can't, the Coke's American, innit? Yeah. We can't sell Coke to the Nazis. Can't sell it on both sides. Mm. So they created Fanta. Wow. And sold that to the Nazis, but it was the same company. So they were playing both sides, mm. so they always come out on top. Yep. Yeah? That's why they have to advertise Coke to make it so Christmassy, because it's not meant to be a, a winter drink. It's a summer drink, you know? They have to make it go, oh, Coca-Cola truck, because otherwise it'll get to winter and no one will drink it. So, like, how do we make a, it's like, how do we make, <laughs> a, yeah, a summer drink, a winter drink? So, yeah. And then you go down the rabbit hole of like, oh, every, you know, so many drinks are made by Coca-Cola yeah. that you think are made by different companies. Yeah. But, um, so this brings me back around to Sabian. Yes. Because, can I say, for a moment there, I was like, did you tell the Sabian story and I just instantly forgot it? But no, you haven't got to it. No, yeah, cool. no, no, no. But this this gave me the same sort of feeling and reaction when, I fact, when you find out about those yeah. sort of things. So... I was like, right, let's let's. I'm gonna look. At, so you you you'd, you'd consider who are the two biggest symbol brands in the world? Well, Zildjian's up there. Zildjian and Sabian, I guess. And Sabian, yeah. And then just below them, you'd probably go Minor, mm. Paste, Istanbul. But Zildjian, well, uh, Istanbul coming up. They're your they're your Reebok though, aren't they? They're not. <laughs> they're not your Adidas and Nike. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I know what you mean. Your two big yeah. main players. You'd you'd go Zildjian and Sabian. So doing my research on my symbol, I was like, oh, I found out about the difference between AA and HH, mm. uh, HH and the X and all that sort of stuff. I was like, let's just look on, look at, look up about Sabian. Because as we sort of know, Zildjian is celebrating their 400th anniversary. Wow. Yeah. 1623. Damn. Started by Avidus Zildjian, I think. That's it. That was his name. Mm. 
Because also when I was younger, Zildjian, such a cool it word. Is, yeah. That's the symbol all the big guys are playing. Mm. That's what you want. You want Zildjians. Mm. Right? And then when you realise, oh, that's someone's name, mm. you're like, ah, huh? that's weird. It's weird because that's you know the I mean? coolest name ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Avida yeah. Zildjian. So anyway, it was like, okay, you know, Zildjian, like from Turkey, been making symbols for 400 years. Mm pretty much nailed it really mm. for a long time biggest symbol brand out there and uh I was like, let's look at sabian sabian founded in 1981 in canada what <laughs> sorry what <laughs> in my head yeah sabian was a again a turkish yep. probably long-standing manufacturer of symbols yeah nah 1981 yeah canada what the fuck is he doing in Canada? What? <laughs> only 1981. Only 40. No, only four years before I was born. Yeah. Sabian was founded. Uh, I'm just wondering, did I get my notes? So that this? means no bands in the 60s or 70s used Sabian. Yeah. Like, that yeah. seems weird, you know? Yeah, it didn't exist. Yeah. Like, so yes, Sabian is a Canadian symbol manufacturer established in 1981 in Meductic or Meductic, New Brunswick. I mean, I was like, okay. Founder, Robert Zildjian. What? Yeah? Yeah, I'm with you. Hang on a minute. Yeah. Founded by a Zildjian. Yeah. What's what's going on here? Anyway, so just had a look. Um, so he had a brother. So, yeah, Robert. Was it Robert? I did say Robert. Robert Zildjian. Yeah. Had a brother called Armand. Right. Right. And I'm just, rather than read it, I'm just going to try and remember. Basically, the Zildjians, yeah, have been going 400 years. Yep. And what they do is, is it was, they pass the secrets of the Sil Zildjian symbol manufacturing through the family, keep it well secret, and only tell it to the oldest son. Oh, I'm loving this already. Yeah. Right? And that passed down for 300 odd years. Then at some point, I think in the 20s, or just before the 20s, the Zildjians moved, some of them moved to America. Right. You know, quite common them, on it? Mm. Or get the boat across. Yeah. Titanic, Britannic. Yeah. Olympic, they were the three ships. A couple of them, we know about what happened. Mm. But, you know, so they moved over to sort of New England. And I think Robert and Armand were the first Zildjians born in the USA. Right. Because if you look on your Zildjian symbols, it says USA, mm. not Turkey. Mm. Um, Their father... Obviously, when they're old enough, decided to break tradition and tell both sons. So, a Robert, who oh. founded Sabian, was the younger brother. Mm. He decided to break tradition and tell both sons, pass down the secret to both sons. But the brothers eventually fell out mm. because um, Robert was overlooked to be CEO mm. of Zildjian mm. and it was given to Armand. So, Robert Zildjian went, fuck this, Yeah, moved to Canada, <laughs> and set up his own symbol company right. in 1981 called Sabian. Amazing. Right? Yeah. And do you know why it's called Sabian? Go on. It's the first two letters of his three kids' names. Sally, <laughs> Billy, <laughs> and Andy. Wow. That's insane. Brilliant. Yeah. I, I was just like... Fucking hell, I never knew that. Yeah. And maybe a lot of drummers do know that. I don't think so. I don't feel like that's common knowledge. But I was like, that's just... Yeah. You've got your two fucking big brands. Yeah. You've got your Adidas, your Puma. You've got your Zildjian and your Sabian. Yeah. from the same fucking family. Because yeah. they had a bit of a squabble. No, I'll show you. Yeah. I'll create... I'll create. I'll make my own yeah. paper company. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. And then, they're, and then the two biggest... Are they still alive, both of them? I don't think so. I no. think they died in 2000 and something. Right wow. And then, yeah, because Zildjian, you find out it's a, when you're younger, it's just Zildjian, Zildjian, it's a brand. And you find out, mm. oh, it's their fucking family name. Mm. And then you find out, oh, Avida Zildjian was a person. Yeah. I mean, that's the coolest name ever. Yeah. And then you're like, Sabian, well, where's Sabian come from? Maybe it's someone's name. Yeah. Maybe it's uh, just Sally, Sally, Billy and Andy. Wow. Sabian. Found 1981 in Canada. I mean, it's like, oh, that's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. That's very cool. 
Well, and I just thought it was a very similar feeling for me when I found out, yeah, about Adidas and Puma, yeah. and I found out about, um, you know, Fanta and Coke. Yeah. I'm sure there's plenty of other things like that. Well, it's funny when you find out something you're like, I never knew he or she was involved in that. So I remember when I found out that Steve Jobs created Pixar just yeah. for a laugh, yeah, yeah. you know, and you're like, what the fuck? Like, I thought that was like a, a company that had been, you know, going forever and like Disney, but it was just like, no, nah, Steve Jobs was bored and wanted to make some films or something and created the biggest, you know... <laughs> film yeah. company yeah 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 um yeah that's mad even the name did I you know you, any of that no i didn't know any of that i thought you were going to say the name savior and came from some sort of like greek god that meant i'm going to kill my brother or something <laughs> but that's somehow even more mad that it's the first that it's just first that letters yeah. two letters of the names it's a bit like that man that made the restaurant and he named the restaurant after his um his son and his daughter, but unfortunately his son and daughter were called Sam and Ella, so <laughs> restaurant didn't go well. That's a joke. That's a that's joke. A, that's a lovely bit of banter. Lovely bit of like a bit of comedy. Um, um no, that's insane. Yeah, so I just I just thought like, oh that's you know, I wanted to learn a little bit more about my new symbol mm. and it took me down that rabbit hole and I've just I've really enjoyed telling people about it and I thought I've got to save this for a yeah. An episode on air. Well, I wonder um, if it blew my mind, uh, and yeah, because uh, you know the secrets that have been passed on to Robert, who then went to make him in Sabian. Do you reckon he? Do you reckon there's some Sabian symbols that are almost carbon copies of Zildjian in a way because he's just gone. Well, that worked, and it's a different name. Well, I guess it. it makes you go well whatever those fucking secrets were yeah. they're fucking good yeah. because because what are the to, secrets is it the metal is it the well this took me down another little yeah, rabbit hole on. I think I'll talk about it now yeah but have you ever heard the phrase phrases used not phrase but used with symbols B20 and B8 yeah that rings a bell so pardon the pud <laughs> good good <laughs> I'm just going to get something up on it because I did some further research. So I'd seen that all around, like B8 symbols, B20 symbols. Mm. And in my head, I'd just seen like, like I think Sabian have a range called B8s mm. and I'd seen B20 and I was like, I've seen these around and as far as I'm aware, B8 symbols are shit <laughs> and B20 symbols are good. Yeah. But I was like, what does it mean? What What does the, what does the B stand yeah. for? What does the number stand for? Again, a lot of this might be obvious to some drummers, but I was like, I've been playing drums how long now? A long time. Mm. And I don't know properly. Mm. So I was like, I'm going to look this up. And this is all about alloys. Right. So for those who don't know, symbols are made out of alloys. What is an alloy, you may ask? Mm. It's a type of metal made from a mix of two or more pure elemental metals. Mm -hmm. The most common symbol alloys are bronze, right? which is copper and tin. Okay. So uh, B20, bronze, which is copper and tin, mm. and the 20 is the percentage of tin. Right. So it's 80% copper and 20% tin. Mm. And this is often considered, the I'm reading this, the sweet spot for symbols. So that's usually what your, like our symbols will be made of. They'll be, they'll be B20s. Yeah. So... So what's B8? Right. 8% tin. 8% tin. Now, the reason why B20s are usually better symbols and why they cost more money is because to make B20 bronze is a two-phase process, mm. meaning that some of the tin isn't fully melted into the copper and exists as microscopic grains. This makes B20 bronze challenging to work with. It's harder than other bronze alloys and also more brittle. So it's very difficult to roll into sheets. Therefore, most B20 symbols are cast rather than stamped. It's hard to machine. Thus, most symbols are hand laved and hand hammered. Right. So if you just use a machine to press the symbol shape, mm. it's just going to break. Mm. So it has to be hand. So, but the B20 bell bronze has the greatest frequency range and this can be manipulated through working the symbols. They can be made to sound bright, like the Zildjian A series, or dark and warm, like the Z series. Um, so basically, like, yeah, it's the percentage of tin mm. in the bronze. 
It's harder to work with, takes longer to make, has to be hand hammered, but it gives you the sweetest sort of sound. Mm. Then you get B8s. So the B8 bronze, yeah, it's 92% copper and 8% tin. But what's the reason behind this big jump down from 20 to 8%? This amount of tins, 8% tin, makes the bronze much more malleable. This means it can be rolled into sheets and stamped into discs. Um, it can be quite consistently laved and hammered by machines, and that saves on labour costs. So that's why your B8 symbols are cheaper, because mm. they're cheaper to make. But basically they're just not as good right quality wise so most symbol manufacturers have b20 and b8s mm. but they might not necessarily be called that say we have a b8x b8 pro the zildjian zbt's mm. zxt's they're going to be b8s mb8s and classics from minor ah. uh paste the rude sim uh, uh the rude the pst's they they're b8 alloys it says as well like doing my research that those are the most common symbol manufacturers have have played around with like b10s b12s mm. but it seems like they've just settled on like the b8 is the sweet spot for making cheap symbols mm. and b20 is the sweet spot for making quality and then there are other symbols there are brass symbols um and things like that but yeah wow that's what the b8 and b b20 is damn it's the amount of tin yeah in your in your bronze and then and why that makes a difference yeah so we should go to a symbol making course or something i'd love to know how they're actually made do you know what i mean yeah like yeah how it, how it, let's uh, let's go to canada yeah yeah let's go to new brunswick this is it how they literally start with some metal and then end up with a symbol yeah so next time if you're if you're ever buying a new symbol think about i mean you know any symbol worth its salt ain't going to be a BA. No. It's a bit like, but that's what that means. It's a bit like sausages, isn't it? Definitely. It's all drums are, drums and sausages are so alike. Well, you know, a good sausage has 20% meat or more. But a, a you know, generic basic Tesco, you know, a quid for eight yeah. is yeah, 8% yeah, 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 yeah. meat. So, yeah. you know, what is the other 92%? Doesn't matter. Don't worry about it. Doesn't don't worry about it. <laughs> just just copper. <laughs> just eight percent pork, ninety two percent copper. A lovely bronze sausage. <laughs> yum 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 yum. Well, yeah, that is fascinating. I've learned a lot. Yeah. And it's that thing of, oh, why didn't I know this before? Yeah, but I don't but think it's that obvious, you know. And a lot of the time, you don't delve into it. Do you know what I mean? Like, you just go, this is what I want as a symbol. I didn't even really go on sound. In fact, I didn't go on <laughs> sound, you know. So there's no way I'm going to Google. Do you want to try it out? Nope. nope. Do I? No, I do not. Well, yeah. I'm glad I finally heard what the, the symbol goss was. <laughs> I hope it wasn't a letdown. No, that was great. It's just interesting, isn't it? It's like that's usually I think in business and all those things, that's what you need. You need a you know, a rival to go against. Because there must be other yeah. things like that that are just, you know I mean, Yeah. Are there any other stories out there of Yeah. Families breaking away and setting up rival companies that are as successful? I might look into it. There must be there must be yeah. other ones. I just love fascinating stories like mm. that about, I guess it's, and it's not ignorance, it's just when, you, you know, a lot of the time these brands are are, are made before you're born yeah. and you just grow up knowing these as two sports brands or two symbol manufacturers and then you're like, ah, well, Sabian's made by a Zildjian. Yeah, well, what? here's a good one. Bailey's, okay? The, yeah. Uh, the famous, supposedly, Irish drink. You kind of, I always thought that was, you know, a drink that had been going around in Ireland since, you know, for hundreds of years, like Guinness, you know, but it's not. It was made in the 70s by a guy from London, you know, and he just, he they needed something new to market abroad. And uh, yeah, my dad weirdly met the guy that created Bailey's at some work conference, you know, and he's some guy 
I don't know if he, he's not old, but you know, he's getting on. And yeah, he said, just, you know, just created it. And, but it seems like this drink that's been in Irish culture yeah, yeah, forever, yeah. but no, it was made like 40 years yeah. ago, just in someone's, I don't know, not shed, but you know what I mean? But now I think yeah, they, yeah. they brew it out of Ireland now to make it seem like, oh yeah, it's an Irish drink. It's always been there. But nope, it was just, you know, nope. some London. Also, lights. I've got one more. Yeah, go on. You know, the score notation software, Sibelius. Mm. Do you know why that's called Sibelius? Uh, well, Sibelius was a composer, mm -hmm. and he was a Finnish composer, and the two guys, the brothers who made Sibelius, um, their surname was Finn, so they went, let's name it Sibelius, because he was Finnish. No. That's it. Fair. That's why they called it. Fair it. enough. Yeah. This is it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I hope of, that's been of some... Um, trying to think of more, but yeah. No. Yeah. That has been of some interest. Yeah. But I just thought it was, uh, it was pretty cool. <laughs> it is pretty cool. Um, yeah. yeah. I love my new symbols. Yeah. And I've got one of each. So I'm supporting. I'm playing both sides. So I always come out on top. <laughs> I thought you were going to delve more into the um, the ride and hi-hat being the perfect combo. I thought that's where it was going to go. As in, like, you found out there were more symbols that fit with other symbols. Because that would be interesting, wouldn't it? If you found, like, this is a good ride. Yeah. But if you match it with this crash, oh, it's perfect. If there was some sort of like, I don't know, frequency well, or tone I thing. guess it's interesting. A lot of it is where like, you know, yeah, there might well be some sort of like, I guess, you know, is is there a point? Like there were some crashes that were really nice mm. that I tried, mm. but they were just too close in tonality to my other yeah. one. So in, in, in some way it's like, well, it's pointless because they just sound quite yeah. similar. But also, is there a sweet spot where frequency range-wise, it needs to be a certain difference mm. between them mm. for them to both, like when you hit them together, mm. they resonate better yeah. or something like that. And obviously, you know, trying them out in in Graham Russell, you're, it's a very big space and you're upstairs, so you are limited to hearing it yeah. in, in that room. But one thing I do, and I recommend doing this, if you ever go and, and buy cymbals, is do try them out. Do try out lots of them. But then also, like, take your own, take all your other cymbals with mm. you. You've got to hear how they react mm. with your other cymbals. Spend the time getting the house kit set up so you can you can play comfortably. Mm. But then another key bit of advice from my point of view is then get. I got Rob to play the drums and I stood in front of the drum oh, kit okay. and heard him play my cymbals. Yeah. Because whilst it might sound good from my perspective, mm. how does it sound from where everyone else mm. is going to hear them from? And then you can make a... You've just got another... Someone else playing them, so you're not just concentrating on playing. You're, you can just hear... You can just listen to them yeah. and and see. That's another little bit of advice Yeah, definitely. Me. But yeah, there must be some sort of. But again, a lot of it is taste, you know, and what and what one person thinks sounds great, yeah. someone else, someone else won't like the sound. So you've got to get symbols. I think that you you're going to enjoy playing, mm. that you're going to enjoy the sound of, you know, and obviously the 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 better quality, the B twenties, you know, mm. probably going to get more, but they're going to be more expensive. But as we know, you know, it ain't cheap. No. And that's the thing, and I think if you're spending that money, take your time. Yeah. You know, take your time and and don't don't be afraid if you're there for forty five mm. minutes. You know, keep trying them. Like keep well, let's put that one there. Let's, you know, I, I I was like, right, can we get another stand so I can put two rides so I can just quickly compare them while playing a beat and that's what the crashes over and things like that. And um, I I got them and I was I was buzzing, yeah, absolutely buzzing. I was like, I'm so happy with these. Um, and I've done a few gigs with them, and and yeah, been really pleased. Um, I'm just look. I, haven't, I don't think I've got anything at the moment, but at some point, I'm sure I'll use them in the studio, yeah. and that'd be nice to hear them recorded. Yeah, definitely as well. But Fanta Nazi symbols. We've done it there all. There we go. They said it couldn't be done, <laughs> but we've done it. Yeah, yeah. I'll do yeah. it. Cool. It did all tie together. And running shoes. Yeah. And running shoes. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, Instagram, Twitter, email, 
get in touch. Yes. If you want. Uh hope you enjoyed our recent couple of interviews. Yeah. Um uh go and go and check out some of Glastonbury. Go and check out Maisie Peters, see Jack Geary playing on that, that big old pyramid stage. Yeah. I will say this, his BDC kit sounded fucking sweet. Yeah, I haven't watched him yet. But I will. The rap Tom, Christ. <laughs> also, as well, if you watch any of Elton John, you know, old boy band, mm. been doing it, mm. fucking years, having a lovely time. Yeah. Two percussionists, mm. drummer, two kick drums. He also had those like smaller kick drums in front of his kick drums. Yeah. I want to research what that's yeah. about. Lovely finish on his drum kit. Uh, looked like sweeties. <laughs> like, like it was like yellow to pink. Nice. Looked like sort of like squashies yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah. Snare drum, fucking hell, was not expecting that snare drum sound. <laughs> like, oh, go check it out. It's insane. Absolute. Whoa, meaty. Really? Just what? Well, because he's an old yeah. boy and you expect it to be. Like... Just because he's an old boy, but also, as part of me was like, I don't know if this fits the genre. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really? Like, this might be better at a Bring Me the Horizon yeah. concert. But, I mean, just quality. And this is symbols, very high and very angled. Yeah. Um, Oh, also drumming related. Sorry, I'm going to harp oh, yeah. back. Watched a bit of Guns N' Roses. And um, their drummer, just, I guess for an eight, you know, a predominantly 80s hair metal band, you mm. know, had a very normal drum kit. He's not their original I thought you were going to say he's something about how he's bald. I mean, he is yeah, bald. Yeah. Uh, with a beard. Mm. Let's get him on. <laughs> but like, just had a... A, a DW yeah. kit, one up, two down, two crashes, yeah. and a China. Yeah. That was yeah. it. And you, you, but you'd think like, like Elton John's drummer had a bigger yeah. kit than his. He's playing Guns N' Roses. Yeah. You, you'd expect like, then I don't know what their original drummer's kit was like. I have to look it up. But you imagine it would be like six toms. I think it got bigger. And loads of like yeah. crashes, you know, up high. That classic sort of eighties thing. Like I made it. You know, Nico McBrain just has so much shit going mm. on. He's like, ah, just one up, two down. Because I, well, I think there is a part. Same setup as Jack Geary. Yeah. I do think there is a part of it. It's like you, as the gig gets bigger, you do match it. Like if you watch Ben from Royal Blood's kit from like the last ten years, first tour it was one up, one down, crash, crash. What we've got basically that was it. And then the next tour he added some more crash symbols and another floor tom. And then the next tour. He started adding more high toms and more symbol, and now it's just like symbols all around. And but it sort of made sense because as they got bigger, it sort. I don't know. It would have been weird if they got bigger as a band. Well, then at some point they become free. Well, yeah, there's that as well. And <laughs> so you yeah, drum tech. But like, I don't know. Jack Overbow tomorrow now has two kick drums. Yeah. Didn't always just used to have a double no. pedal. But I think you've got to match the gig. And if you're playing... A, I don't know. I, I I have this thing with... It sounds weird to say. I have this theory with like drum kits. If you look at a drum kit and it looks solid and big and just like a brick on stage, it's like that's not going to move. Then it makes sense for the act to be playing a big stage. But sometimes you'll see a drummer play festival and you can see the kit sort of rattling a bit maybe like you know they've pressed down on the hi-hat and the hi-hat wobbles and the rack tom's a bit shaky and i'm like you don't look set up for this do you know what i mean and um and i do think it's like i don't know it can be overlooked if you've got a big kit it's like oh okay this person deserves to be here you know but if you've got a smaller one that looks a bit rickety chicken and egg yeah. isn't it? Apart from Charlie Watts. But I think Jacko said, like, he added the second kick because they were playing bigger yeah. stages. Yeah. And it, the, the kit just needs to look yeah. bigger. Yeah, exactly that. Yeah. You know, but the endorsement's helping it. Mm. And a, ain't anyone throwing it about. the drum tech <laughs> helps. Yeah. Don't have to lug it in a Honda Civic <laughs> every week. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Nice. It was good. It was actually quite nice watching some of Glastonbury this year and focusing in on the drummers mm. and being like oh let's let's check out what they're what they're doing who are they what they're playing what does it sound like well the last thing yeah i was just about to say about sound it's funny i don't know how much you know about this but the sound that you get when you're there is different obviously to the sound on tv not obviously it might not be yeah. obvious but yeah. to people that yeah. don't know when you're there you'll be watching and there's a sound man on the field somewhere doing the sound but when you watch it on TV, the sound that you're getting from the TV isn't the same mix. It'll be some guy in a van or girl 
Um, and uh, he's doing the sound. So I've heard Guns N' Roses, people have been slagging them off because they were saying the sound's awful. But then people actually at the gig were like, no, the sound was great. So I don't know if maybe yeah. they had a bad mixer for TV, but it's like that can let you down. You know, if, if some guy from BBC who doesn't know your sound fucks it up and then puts it on telly and it's like, you know, a hundred thousand people saw it at Glastonbury and thought it was great, but then a million people watched on telly and were like, this is awful, you know? So, yeah. Because, um, yeah, you, if you just, yeah, you can't replicate, you can't record the audio that the people no, are hearing in the field no. and put that out on no. telly. So it's it's the sound taken from the desk and mixed for broadcast. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. we had that with uh, an auction thief. We did 2000 Trees Festival and Extra Miles, they had a stage for the weekend and we, we played on that because we were our records were released through them and they filmed yeah. properly filmed like multicam filmed it and then yeah took the feed from the debt obviously it's way smaller but and then they sent us the um, then the it was then mixed mm. post gig and synced up with the live footage you know and we were sent it for sort of if we wanted to pick a couple of tracks that mm. they'd put on um, on YouTube so maybe we'll post one but yeah it sounds like it sounds good mm. but it's like it's Obviously, coming from a big PA in the in a tent, yeah. it's going to sound very different, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah definitely. But right, let's, let's bounce. bounce. Yeah, but um, I feel drained. Yeah, just knowledge, yeah, just shitting knowledge, knowledge out. Yeah. Bang, 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 bang. No, That's good. Just shitting knowledge into your I'll face. I have to look up more rivals because uh, there's got to be more. Can't just be those two in history. No. Business rivals no. that made the same product. Yeah. But yeah. That were also brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it is <laughs> just those two. I don't know. It's quite a specific yeah. thing. Anyway. Yeah. Right. Sweet boy. Have a good you week. You too. Catch you on the flip. Flip bitty flat. Thanks for listening. Thank you for listening to Drum and Drummer. You can find us on Instagram at Drum and Drummer Podcast. And you can send us an email to drumanddrummerpod at gmail.com. Remember, just pick up the sticks and twat it. <laughs>